That's gonna be the thumbnail. <laughs> hey, my name is Ivy and welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time. If you are new here, I am so excited to be spilling the tea. That's right, the tea today on the Wicked Widow Beauty Tea Time Palette. I have never had so many people reach out to me as did when I purchased this palette. I was shocked, honestly, because it's a pretty small brand and I was not expecting so many people to want to hear me talk about this particular item, but I'm more than glad to do so. I've been testing it out. I've been trying all the shades. I've been gathering my thoughts and I definitely do have thoughts. So if you are interested in hearing more about this particular palette and my experience with it, definitely keep on watching. We're gonna do some swatches. We're gonna talk through a couple eye looks and we're just gonna get into the nitty gritty all about it. Here we go. Okay, so here is a quick look at the outer packaging, which is plastic kind of coated cardboard. As you can see, there is this very psychedelic Alice in Wonderland inspired bunny on the front. He is super cute, but he's also a little wacky looking and I love the kind of creepy teacups and I love the overall design of the cover. It really appealed to me when it was released. It's definitely something that I kind of just kept coming back to and I thought it was really interesting as far as the art went. I was hoping that this palette was gonna have magnetic pans that would be removable from the packaging because I thought this would be a really cool palette to be able to reuse. But from what I can tell so far, they are glued in and it's not a magnetic palette. Palette. So not that you can't depot it, obviously if you have the tools and the time, you could probably remove the shades, but it's certainly not designed to be customizable. It's, it's fine, I'm not saying it's a terrible thing, but I do like when brands make their palettes customizable because I like to reuse them and move shades around, but that's a personal thing. Anyway, I think it's a cool take on Alice in Wonderland. It's not too cutesy, it's a little creepy. I dig that vibe. That's my thoughts on the packaging. It does have a mirror inside. There are eight shades total in the palette. There are four really pigmented matte shades. There are two, I would say fairly flaky, multi-chrome shades. And then there are two shimmer shades. I am going to use the word shimmer lightly because I do feel like the shimmer shades are not the best formula of the bunch in terms of the overall palette. I think that the matte shades are really strong. I think the multi-chromes are also really strong, but the shimmer shades are a little lacking. We'll get into it when we get into the swatches and go shade by shade. I find this color story very interesting because it definitely appeals to me as far as some of the standout shades. I love to see a lime green. I love to see a lilac purple. I love to see a bright golden yellow. All of those things really appeal to me. And then there's that kind of like shimmery, flaky, multi chromy green, which just Mm, eats at my soul, I love it. But it feels very much like a companion palette. There are no grounding kind of matte shades in here that you would typically pull to make a more of an everyday look. There is no real inner highlight corner shade. You might think that the white is going to serve that purpose. It does not. I will get into that with the swatch, but there's just nothing about it that makes it feel like it'll be an easily everyday workable palette. I really definitely think think of it as a companion palette. However, the two looks that I'm going to talk about today, I used only this palette. I was able to get pretty cool looks using just this palette. I'm not saying you can't use it alone, but to me, it feels like it was designed to be more of a companion to other palettes or other shades in your life. And it definitely feels like it's made for the makeup lover who has a bigger collection, not for the everyday lay person who's deciding to, you know, pick up a random eyeshadow palette. It's definitely got a lot of thought put into it. I think that it's well curated. I also love the little pan impressions that they did of the spade shape. I thought that was a really cute, nice touch, just very vi vibrant and bright and interesting. I think it's I think it's a very cool idea. All right, so let's get into some swatches. So I'm gonna start with the shade Nonsense. That is that sort of like pinky lavender shade. I have to say that this shade Nonsense is probably one of my favorites in the palette. I know it's a, a matte shade, but I really feel like I don't have anything else like this in my collection. And when I do use the shade, it stands out to me as that perfect lilac-y, pinky purple that I found to be extremely helpful in looks. It's a very 
beautifully smooth pigmented style mat very easy to build not too chalky not a lot of kickback in the pan just blends beautifully so the mats i would say so far have been fairly nice and impressive to me now i'm going to do that white shade called drink me that's the shade right here so i'm going to show you drink me on my finger as you can see it's this white shade this is the shade in the palette that confuses me the most when i saw pictures of the palette i just assumed that because it was an independent brand that this was going to be a really beautiful iridescent shade that would have some sort of flip to it that it would be a really beautiful inner corner highlight something like that i thought that the white tied nicely to the theme of the alice in wonderland rabbit however it is not what i expected at all and unfortunately not in a good way drink me is a straight up kind of chalky white it does have a little bit of shimmer to it but it's almost like a lightly shimmery matte white shade so here's the swatch on my hand and as you can see there's no discernible glitter in it there's no flip to it there's no real interest it's just a straight slightly shimmery white so I personally am puzzled by this choice because I think this would have been the perfect opportunity to do one of those really beautiful, flippy, iridescent white shades, and it would have made total sense within the palette and would have been really beautiful. And instead you end up with this kind of like chalky white shade that I tried to use, had very little success using. I'm not really sure of the point of it. In my opinion, it's kind of a miss and is not serving the palette. They could have just done something that gave you that homage to the rabbit, but they could have done something way more interesting and they did not. So unfortunately that's a miss for me, but anyway, we, we move on. Next, I'm gonna do that very golden shade adventure. It's the second matte and this is a beautiful, golden yellow leaning a little bit more orangey especially on my skin tone it swatches very very bright golden rod again slightly orangey yellow another beautiful matte shade in the palette again i've i've found these to be really highly workable beautiful pigmented all the things that you'd want i think the name is interesting it's a little bland like adventure just feels a little like they ran out of ideas and then just decided to call it adventure but who am i to judge anyway all right so now i'm going to do the key which is our first multi-chrome shade and that is this bluish purplish flippy shade i'm going to show you the swatch on my hand as well so as you can see it's a fairly flaky formula very high shine metallic it shifts from blue to purple that's pretty much the the nature of it there's not there's not much else to it so i guess i think it's technically a multi-chrome or a black base multi-chrome but i would actually venture to maybe just call it a duochrome. I don't want to misrepresent it. I really only see blue and purple in it, although there's subtle shifts to the blue where it goes from a little bit lighter to a little bit darker blue. So this is, I would say, fairly typical for a, a multi-chrome or a duochrome of, of a black base. Like it's, it's giving you, if you're into makeup and you're into eyeshadow, something you've probably seen before, but it's very well done. It's very um, smooth and it's very impactful. I think that it is a beautiful color. I think it makes sense in here. I think it's, it's well done. I just don't think it's the most innovative thing I've ever tried. I've talked about this before, but like black base multi-chromes, as much as I want to just like be obsessed with them, they're not my thing. I'm much more of a lighter iridescent kind of gal. And so these just aren't my jam. That doesn't mean that I don't think they're pretty or that I, I will never use them, but they're not the thing that I seek out the most or reach for the most. Okay, next we're gonna do the second row and I'm gonna start with the shade Dreamer that is that limey shade and again this is their matte formula all the mattes i have found to be consistent which to me is a real plus i like consistency <laughs> uh sometimes when you buy a palette especially from a smaller brand you might find that there's a lot of inconsistency that is not the case here the formulas are really consistent with each other so dreamer is that lime chartreuse 
green, very pretty, very easy to blend. Not much to say about it. It's definitely a, a more yellow leaning green. I haven't really played around with it too much on my eyes yet, but I can see that it would be a very handy shade to have because it's a very bright pigmented green. Those aren't always that easy to find. The next shade is called Rabbit. Again, interesting that they chose to call the white Drink Me and the purple Rabbit. I would have reversed those, just a thought. But it is their, their second shade that is in that shimmery formula. The other one being Drink Me, which is the white. And I'm not the most impressed with these shimmers because they're not really bringing much to the table. As you can see, it is a pretty like straight purple. It's a beautiful shade. It's one of those kind of periwinkle purples, but it is just giving you, you know, a bit of shine. It's definitely pretty, but there's nothing about it that's bringing a ton of interest. It's not like it's super glittery. It's not even that shimmery. It's just got a little bit of glow to it. Next, we're gonna do Imposter. It's this teal shade. This one really, really impressed me. I used it in one of the looks I'm gonna show you today. Wow, like this is a really banging matte teal shade. I would never ordinarily pick this out of a lineup as something that like I'd wanna pick up and use on its own. But once I started playing with it, I was like, damn, this is a really cool shade. And it was so easy to use on my eyes. And as you can see, just really pigmented, really saturated really beautiful. I think Nonsense is, is my favorite shade. That's that initial matte purple. And my f second favorite shade would be Imposter. And if you had asked me when I purchased the palette, if I thought that those were gonna be my favorite shades, I would have told you you're nuts. But again, when I've been playing with it, those are the ones that have stood out to me. The last shade is this one, and it is the second multi-chrome duo chrome, and it's called Who Are You? Of the two multi-chrome shades, who Are You is definitely my preferred over the key, just because of my preferences. But it is a beautiful, flaky, metallic, very shimmery kind of green shade. Again, not super duper duper shifty. You can kind of see some shifts in it where it goes from almost like a bronzy green to more of a teal, a little bit of blue in there. Really, really fun shade to play with. I think it, it is lovely and it definitely appeals to me just because of the tones and the overall high shine kind of metallic way that it blends together. If you've tried a lot of eyeshadows already, which I know a lot of you who watch me have, and you've tried a lot of different formulas, I don't know that you're gonna be wowed by it. I think overall that if you're used to very shifty shades or very unique formulas, you're not necessarily gonna find anything crazy out of the box, at least in this palette. But again, thoughtful color story, interesting ideas, great kind of overall companion palette. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a look at the whole palette swatched out on my arm, so that way you can take a look at the cohesive or uncohesive, depending on how you look at it, palette as a whole, and then we'll get into my thoughts about the looks that I did and the overall palette. said enough <laughs> for a lifetime in terms of the swatching. I did do two looks, including the one that I am wearing right now. I'm going to show you some close-up footage of this particular look. Played around with that shade Nonsense, which is that more beautiful matte lavender shade. And then I did try to use Rabbit, which is that metallic uh, shimmery purple. And then I did use the Key, which is the blue multi-chrome. And I paired that with some blue liner. Overall, I think it created a very cool kind of soft gradient graphic eye look and the shades did blend really well together. I didn't have 
any issues overall with fallout maybe just like a tiny bit with the multi-chrome but nothing that i didn't expect and then the second look that i did i loved how it came out again i played with that more vibrant teal shade imposter that matte teal was a total standout and i paired that with who are you which is the green multi-chrome and adventure overall it was a really fun look to do i felt i felt like everything kind of both blended and stayed in its place equally well, which is something that I always look for in eyeshadow formulas. I was excited about how this palette inspired me to do looks that I would ordinarily not do. It definitely made me think about my eyeshadow differently. I think it's because all of the colors are kind of out there. Playing with it on its own really forced me to just try new things and pair things together that I wouldn't ordinarily pair together. And the result has been some really cool and funky and fun looks that I am very excited with how they came out. I'm curious about what else the brand might do and what other media properties they want to take on as they have these Edward Scissorhands inspired palettes that look kind of interesting. I'm just curious, you know, what their overall look is going to be as they progress into the future. Overall, the brand is interesting to me. I like what I'm seeing. I want to see more and I want to see them grow and I want to see more people try them and I'd really love to know if you've tried them what you think or if you haven't tried them what you're interested in potentially picking up from them. Okay so I think I have said everything that I want to say about this palette and I hope that it was helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video definitely give it a like before you leave it and subscribe because I would love to have you be around for future videos. I really hope that you enjoyed this. I definitely enjoyed chatting about it, giving you my thoughts, and I can't wait to do more in the future. I want to thank you again, and I will see you and talk to you in the next one. Bye.